Welcome back to the channel. This is part two in the Python AWS Lambda series. In this video, we're going to clone the repo, step through the code locally, and run it locally to see the functionality. Before we get started, real quick, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Sponsor me on GitHub Sponsors. Sponsor me on Patreon down here. Subscribing to my YouTube channel. Liking the video, sharing on platforms like Reddit or Discord. Starring the repo up here or follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot and I really appreciate it. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is clone the repo. So you wanna to go to this URL. I'll put it in the link in the description below. Go to code, copy, and we're gonna clone the repo. Open up your terminal. It's gonna do git clone, paste the URL, and then CD into it. So now we have the repo open. Open it up in your code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna start with the app.py file. We have the imports up here. Let's go through the two important ones. Request, this we're going to use to request the data from the API. And SMTP lib, this we're going to use to send emails. We're not using a service like AWS SMS because that costs additional money and I want to keep this video as bare bones as possible. So let's keep going. We have to specify the latitude and longitude of where we want to pull the weather data for. I picked an easy landmark, the Empire State Building. I'm excluding these variables that we don't need in return. You can ignore this. The URL, this is the URL we're going to execute to get the data for the weather API. Passing the latitude longitude, the exclude from up here, and an API key. We're going to walk through how to get this in a second. Next, we're loading the variables from the .env file. What this is going to do is it's going to go to the .env file, load all the variables there as environment variables that we can use inside of our Python script. So let's take a look at the .env file now. I put the variables we're going to need in the program for here, the weather API key, the email user, and the email password. We're going to replace all these values here with the values that you have. So let's get the weather API key first. Open up your browser. And we're going to go to openweathermap.org slash API. I'll put the link in the description. So you're going to click sign up, put in your email, get a confirmation email, and sign in. Once you sign in, you can go over here to your username, click my API keys, and copy your API key. Go back to your code, weather API key, and paste it. One caveat, when I was first doing this, it took almost an hour for the weather API key to start becoming functional. If that's the case, just give it an hour and it will start working. It might start working immediately for you as well. Email user, email password, just put your email username and your email password. Now, if you're not using 2FA for your Google account, you can skip this step, I am. With Google 2FA, you cannot use your email password directly in code. You have to use it with something called an app password. So let's set up how to get that app password right now. Go back to your browser, Go to Google account, myaccount.google.com. Put the link in the description as well. Security on the left. Scroll down. App passwords. Okay, so now let's create an app password. Select app at the bottom. Other. Give it a name. App password. Doesn't really matter. Generate. Copy the app password. Click done. Go back. Paste it here. That's now your app password. Of course, I'm going to delete mine because I just exposed it to everyone. All right, so we have our app password. And then you replace your email here as well. Your email, 123 at gmail.com, whatever it is. And if it's not at gmail, that's fine. You can put something else there. Okay, so that's our .eme file. You should have all the variables here replaced with your variables. Go back to app.py. Send email. We're going to come back to this in a second. So let's minimize this for now. Handler. This is going to be the entry point for our Lambda function. I'll step through that a little bit deeper in a second. Response, we're calling the request library and git calling the URL we had at the top, passing the latitude, longitude, the exclude, and finally our weather API key, calling the os.getenv, because the load.env loads the variables from our .env file as environment variables. So we're able to do that here. Pass it in, we get the data as JSON. We specify some rain and snow conditions. We get the weather from the data, and then we just Pick a message based on what today's weather is. This is all very simple code, not meant to confuse, just for a purpose of example. And then we send the email with the message. So let's go back to send email. Here we are. Gmail user, Gmail password, getting from getting v. Mail to, mail from. We're sending it from ourselves to ourselves. The subject and the message, passing the message as a variable. And finally, we call the server, smtp, gmail.com. If you're not using Gmail, you can easily find what it should be here. 
TLS, login, send email, and close. All very straightforward. Next file we're going to look at is the requirements. Request, python.dmv. Remember request, we're using this to get the API data. Python.env to load the environment variables from the .env file. Okay, we have the code. We can actually start running it now. So before I run the code, I need to replace the .env variables with mine. So I'm going to do that real quick and take that off screen so you can't see it. Okay, I've replaced mine. So now we can actually run this locally. So we're going to do python app.py. You see it executed. So let's go back and go to our email. And we have this email right here. Well, there's a day. Here's the date. Pack your snow boots. Okay, so it's going to snow today at the Empire State Building. Great. Last file I want to look at real quick is the Docker file. This is we're going to use to package our code to run it on Lambda. To start off, we pick the base image for our Docker. This is publicly provided by AWS, this public ECR AWS Lambda Python 3.8. And with this public image from AWS, we also have this variable Lambda task root. Let's take a look real quick. I put the link for this in the description below. It's a documentation on Lambda from AWS. Basically what it's saying here is the AWS base image provides the following environment variables, lambda task root, specify an equal var task. Install any dependencies under the lambda task root alongside the function handler. So let's see what we're doing there. We're copying app.py, the function handler, into lambda task root. We're copying requirements.txt, the dependencies, into lambda task root. Then we're running pip install, the requirements.txt. Here's our arguments, the same ones from the .env file, and a few other ones. These are going to come later in the video series, but relate to the AWS IAM, so let's find the user that we're going to use on AWS to run the code. We specify them all as the environment variables as well. And then finally, we have the entry point to our Lambda function, which I alluded to earlier, command app.handler, where app specifies app.py, and handler refers to Go down, the function name handler. This means that when we run our Docker file, it's going to look for app.py and then call the function handler with two variables, event and context, which we don't define here because we don't actually use them. But you still have to pass these in because that's what it expects. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to package our code as a Docker container and push it to AWS ECR. Stay tuned for that one.